Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So in watching the season 5 of The Walking Dead, it's brought into mind some thoughts that I've had in the past, and I thought I would reiterate them once again, because I do believe that they're important points. Just want to talk a bit today about the very latent social critique that's being presented in the recent Walking Dead episodes where they show the laissez-faire, well-to-do types who are chilling out in Alexandria, contrasted by, of course, the crazy, nomadic, straggling, survivalist preppers who roll on in and who just happen to be hard as nails. And so I'm going to talk a bit about this division today. So most recently, the characters come across this holdout called Alexandria. Of course, probably, you know, referencing the city of Alexandria, which was supposed to be the, I believe it was Greek, city of knowledge. You know, you had the Library of Alexandria, which was supposed to contain all the world's knowledge. Anyways, and of course, within this compound, they find people who many of the the crew believe have become very weak. They've become very petty. They talk about, you know, what they're going to cook for supper. And they've, they've brought back the, the decadence of civilization. And they've become very complacent in their digs. And the... To many of the crew, this is a shocking thing because for them, being the hardened nomads that they are, you know, they're fully aware of the threats that are possible outside those walls. And I believe Sasha was freaking out because she was like, you know, why isn't somebody on the tower? And I think Rick was backing her up on that. And they just have this really sort of complacent idea that they're going to be okay. So it relates back to this idea that being on the road, you get hard. You know, there's definitely a less chance of survival, but it it has the effect of, of hardening the survivors. And without a doubt, all the stuff that, of course, that crew has been through, they could have only survived in a Hollywood production. I mean, the whole idea that Carol blew up that propane tank or whatever it was right as they were about to get whacked over the head and slit their throats at terminus it's you know it's a long shot you know everything that happened is kind of a long shot but i think some of the points that they're trying to make in that film is that it's much more there are some benefits to bugging out and being on the road and that you do get harder you do get tougher and in many ways, this is kind of a social critique because they're saying that all these soft people who live up on the hill, they're getting softer day by day and they're very vulnerable. They're very naive to the scary world that actually exists outside. And then you have these stragglers coming in from the outside who are aware of the hard knocks of life, who've had to live a rough life, who weren't born with a silver spoon in their mouth, and who had to fight their way to the top. They understand human nature. And for me, what they're trying to tell us is that the first will be last, and the last will be first. This is the best example I've seen of my theory that those at the top now will not be at the top in a SHTF situation. That it's going to be the lowly working class stiffs who somehow bubble up to the top and somehow assert dominance over the situation. Do I think this is a good thing necessarily? You know, whether it's good or bad is relative. 
I'm not saying it's the way it should be. I'm just saying the way it's likely going to be. All of those people with their fancy houses on the hill are relying now on this crew of misfits. Most of them were just average Joes. I think Rick was probably the one who probably had the highest social status out of all of them. You know, as a as a police officer, sheriff, whatever. And I don't even think they make that much, to tell you the truth. So, just goes to show, it's proof positive of my theory that the last shall be first and the first shall be last. And that's what they're trying to show. That all those creature comforts breed complacency. And that complacency will ultimately, ultimately be what gets them killed. Now, the woman who's running the compound is clearly intelligent. Clearly, this compound did not stay alive on luck alone. There was undoubtedly some smart moves that have been made over the however many years this the zombie universe has been active. Nonetheless, the proof is right there that these people have absolutely no idea of the groups that exist out there. And of course, Terminus was but one of several termis Terminuses throughout this zombie universe, I'm presuming. You know, the marauders that Daryl ran with for a while. Just one of many groups out there. <laughs> The governors, just one of many governors out there in this universe. Just because they've overcome a few of those groups doesn't mean they're all gone. And this city of Alexandria is brainwashed and naive to that. And to me, it's almost as if the Walking Dead crew now, they're like the survivalists and the preppers who are trying to convince everybody like look we need to prepare we need to be ready and be vigilant and everybody else is kind of like no let's just watch tv and hope everything goes well because it's been going well so far i mean the the social critique that is happening there is blatantly obvious so let me know what you think about the cultural metaphors in The Walking Dead. And if you didn't know, there was a scene in that towards the end of, of the show where it shows Rick walking down the street and the street name is entitled Morgan. So that's most definitely foreshadowing the return of the beloved Morgan character who was the one who saved Rick in the first place. And of course went crazy. And so hopefully now he's on crazy. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out my other social media feeds. I got a few things up and running. I got the Twitter, the Pinterest, the Facebook, all that nonsense. So by all means, add me up. All right, thanks for watching. Canadian Pepper out.